to the addition, if Memphis could talk, I'm R2C2H2, the audience. And uh, I got a lot to talk about today. First starting out, let's talk about the uh, recent Democratic primaries for District 9 U.S. House of Representatives in Memphis, Tennessee. As we all know, uh, Harrington, according to Harrington, it was a referendum on him. But according to the numbers, it was a landslide in favor of incumbent Congressman Steve Cohen. He kept his House seat. He won against Harrington somewhere around 79% to 21% of the votes. Uh, uh, some places so 80 to 20, but it was very, very, it was very much a beatdown. And regardless of how you look at it, it was a referendum on Mayor, former Mayor Willie Harrington, or if it was this pro Cohen support, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, Harrington is not in any type of elected office since for a long time. He's been mayor of Memphis for almost 20 years, the longest serving mayor in Memphis history, uh, the first black elected mayor in Memphis history. And in terms of his legacy, only time will tell, but I'll tell you this. I think the people are tired of enough uh, big ego do nothings in office. We are tired. The people have spoken. And we are in favor of service right now. People are hurting economically, spiritually, morally. People are hurting across this country and around the world. And we need uh, leadership that represents the power and the will of the people. Not leadership that's going to be boosting one person's ego. Just one. Now, I, you know, Harrison said that in a district like District 9, which is overwhelmingly uh, African American, a large percentage of the population are not minority, but they will be the majority, which is African Americans, should have a person of color represented in Congress. And he might have a point on that accord because once Senator Burris leaves the Senate, there will be no black representation in the Senate or and hardly there's any uh, black representation in the House of uh, Congress, U.S. House of Representatives. And uh, if you look at what's going on right now in the news, they're trying to even make it more marginalized as it already is. But getting back to Harrington, uh, Harrington said he wanted to represent the people in the House, uh, but he had almost 20 years as mayor to do the people's work, the self-proclaimed people's mayor. He was actually, uh, I believe he had good intentions when he came to office because he was picked as the uh, unifying force behind the People's Convention. Like everybody uh, put aside their own egos and own agendas and got behind Harrington back in 91 to put him in office to defeat the incumbent mayor at the time, Dick Hackett, and it was very close. But he got in because of the unity of the community that got behind him. But it sounds like the four terms, uh, promises yet unfulfilled, uh, promises broken, uh, things have not been done. For example, yes, he enriched some of him his uh, business partners and cronies and friends, but he had failed to really empower minority business owners, or when I say black business owners in this community. Uh, a lot of black business contractors are still left out in the cold when it comes to government citywide contracts. I know some of these people personally, and when they do win a bid, the bid does not cover their expenses for their operation of their business, let alone to have a living wage. So this is crazy. We think about uh, the city government has been ran by majority black folk for almost 20 years, and yet black businesses are left out in the cold. Uh, black businesses generate less than 1% of the total annual, annual revenue in the city in Shelby County. So black businesses have not been making a dent in terms of economic uh, gains because uh, you have uh, great economics. You, you tend to employ more people. And if we can't make money, you can't employ nobody to work for you, and which in turn is hurting the city and hurts the neighborhoods where these people live at and so forth. And you can tell you will never get uh, Mayor Harrington confused with Maynard Jackson of Atlanta, the first black mayor of Atlanta who actually helped uh, the black business class achieve a uh, great level of success when it forced the white city fathers to employ them as business contractors at the airport when they were doing renovation, the Hartfield Air Airport at the time. He forced it. And uh, by him doing so, instead of him going to the corporate 
white corporate America for, you know, money for his re-election campaign. He went to the black business owners he made rich. Now, you must ask yourself this. Who have Harrington actually empowered besides his inner circle in Memphis? Look around you. I mean, you go to some parks in the city. Some of the grasses have been cut. Uh, police officers complain about the fact that they don't get no overtime pay for working festivals. Uh, you got the fact that a lot of the sanitation workers still have not resolved their benefit issues from the 1968 sanitation worker strike. And you thought it would be getting it done under a black mayor uh, would be the best thing or best time to get it done, rather. Uh, you look at the fact that Mayor Harrington's alumni school, uh, high school, Booker T. Washington, and other schools are still uh, behind in terms of education, getting kids educated. You got a lot of kids in the city, a lot of people in the city that are functional and literate. So education and economics are not where they need to be if you want to be a world class city. So I guess Harrington, uh, it's kind of hard to find any bright spots in his uh, administration besides the symbol of him being the first black mayor of Memphis. Nobody can ever take that away from him. Uh, you look at Congressman Cohen, uh, I think he embodies the true spirit of what a public servant is. I think uh, in this case, like Dr. King said, you, you judge people on, on the uh, content of their character, not the color of their skin. And I think people looking at Steve Cohen's track record, uh, impressive, uh, very accessible, has, has done a lot to empower not only Memphians but also Tennesseans. Started the Tennessee State Lottery, which enabled to fund scholarships for needy kids and kids going to the Tennessee State uh, funded schools to further their education. So, and also the fact that, I mean, he did a lot uh, in terms of this. Uh, I know working with the Jimmy Lawson Jim Marie Festival. Uh, putting out proclamations and resolutions and stuff uh, for that cause that we've been working on and uh, just being a great servant of the people. Not doing what he wants to do, but doing the will and fulfilling the people's business on the hill and beyond. And he was promptly awarded uh, for his service because he might not be the talker of a Harrington or have that charisma of a Harrington, but he does have the integrity of a Cohen. Which is Congressman Steve Cohen, he has integrity, he has a lot of character, and he's very respective of people's uh, wishes. And like I said, uh, congressmen or congresswomen could take a note out of his book on how to really be a public servant. So I salute Congressman Cohen, for he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow that no one can deny.